Uh, remember this expression? What did we say? I can't remember if this is a driving force, right? We saw this with uh, over resistance. We saw this with uh, electricity. We saw this with blood flow. We see this with airflow as well. Right? So uh, uh, air is going to move by what we call bulk flow, and it's, a, it's driven by a pressure gradient. So the driving force here, uh, so for airflow, the driving force is a pressure gradient. And there will be resistance. Okay. So the pressure gradient, air is going to move from an area where it's in high pressure, just like everything else, to low pressure. So if we're talking about ventilation, and we're moving air from the outside in the atmosphere, into our lungs, we must generate a condition where the pressure inside the lung is less than the pressure is outside the body, right? And then air has no choice but to move into the lung. And we would just do inhaling, right? That would be an, an inspiration. Conversely, if we want to exhale, we have to generate a condition where pressure is greater inside the lung than it is outside the body, okay? To allow for exhaling. Now, these pressures, let me introduce some terms here for you. Uh, to look at this, uh, we're going to talk about atmospheric pressure. That's the pressure outside the body. Okay? And we can abbreviate that P, ATM, for atmospheric. Now, this varies, right, depending upon where you are on the planet. Uh, if you're at sea level, we're almost at sea level, but not quite. If you're at sea level, the pressure is 760 millimeters of mercury at sea level. So that's the number we usually use just at sea level. Now, the higher you get above sea level, the less atmosphere there is pushing down on you, so this number goes down. The more you get below sea level, even if you're going below sea level and not going underwater, the pressure is going to be greater, right? So if we were at, in Death Valley, where there are places where you can get below sea level, this pressure is going to be some, something greater than 760. Here in Pasadena, we're at about, what, 1,000 feet or so above sea level? That number might be 750 or something like that. So that's the atmospheric pressure, the barometric pressure. Um, so it's going to vary based upon where you are on the planet. But we'll just assume we're at sea level for 760. Okay. So we'll call that the atmospheric pressure. The pressure inside the lung, we'll call that the intrapulmonary pressure. Okay. So the intrapulmonary pressure intra inside of pulmos lung. So it's the pressure inside the lung. Now, that must change, right? That must go up and that must go down. But eventually, because this is, you have to realize that this is an open system, right? The lungs are an open system with the atmosphere. There, this, this might sound wrong, but if I had a really long skinny finger, I could reach down my throat and touch my alveolus without hitting anything, right? Now, don't do it in public, okay? But, but that's, that just means that this is open, right? It's not like there's, except if I'm, you know, closing off my mouth and my nose, it's an open system. So there's no choice but for that pressure, whether it goes up or down, eventually has to do what? Equilibrate with whatever atmosphere it is. So this intrapulmonary pressure, it'll go up, it'll go down, but eventually, in this respiratory cycle, it has to equal atmospheric. So for example, if I want to inhale, the pressure, this intrapulmonary pressure, must be less than the atmosphere. And if that's true, what does air do? Move into the lung. If the intrapulmonary pressure is greater than the atmospheric, what does air do? It moves out of the lung. Because it's going to flow by this pressure gradient from a high pressure to a low pressure. And it will continue to flow until it reaches equilibrium, whatever atmospheric pressure. Does that make sense? And again, the bigger that gradient, the greater the difference in pressures, the more air will move. Okay with that. All right, now resistance. Remember this. Just say yes. Yeah, exactly. What did we say? Length, viscosity, radius to the fourth. Remember those? Remember that? That's the uh, that's hydraulics. That's a, a, an equation that explains hydraulics. Now that's the flow of fluids in a container. It also happens to be true for air. 
So the resistance is greater with the length. Is that something that changes? Is the length of my conducting passageway something that's going to change? No. So do we need to care about that so much? No. Viscosity of air. Okay. Is that something that, that changes? It can change, right, depending upon where you are. Obviously, the more humid air is, the, the more viscous the air is, and it would be harder to move the resistance to go up. But within a particular environment, that's also a constant. I don't know, anybody ever been to, to the south or the midwest on a warm, hot summer day, and you go outside and take a big breath? The air is heavy. I mean, it's, it's difficult to breathe sometimes because it is such so wet air. Tropical air is very wet. But it doesn't change. It's very environment specific, so it's not like it's going to change over the course of, of, you know, minutes or whatever while you're breathing. It's kind of a constant. So what we're really looking at here affecting the resistance to airflow is the same thing that we talked about with the cardiovascular system and blood flow, and that is the diameter here, not of vessels, but of the bronchioles and the bronchi. If we have bronchoconstriction, so they're going down, that resistance is going to, the, the the resistance is going to go up, and it's going to be more difficult to breathe. So, what is a, a, a constriction of the bronchioles? Anybody have asthma? Yeah, you ever have an asthma attack? Damn, that's hard to breathe. That's hard to breathe, right? Because this is what your bronchioles are doing. They're clamping down. Bronchitis. Who has time for that? Bronchitis is not a constriction of the bronchioles, but it's an inflammation of the lining. So effectively what's happening to the passageway, it's getting smaller, right? So both of those things, like bronchitis and asthma, the effect is very similar, but the cause is different, right? What causes those things? Yeah. What about like hypothermia? When like, you get this thing really cold and you just can't. Yeah, so so what happens what happens when you're cold to to blood vessels and the bronchioles is that they can uh, that's a, a more of a temperature-induced kind of thing, and that causes that bronchoconstriction, that cold. It's not really your body's 